On June 12, 2002, an off-duty Shoshone County firefighter set off for a walk on a mountain trail behind Kellogg High School. On this particularly humid morning, he would encounter more than his usual path would regularly bring. On the trail, he came across the remains of a gentleman seemingly having perished from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The preceding investigations in the 21 years elapsed have returned no identity for the decedent, leaving the seemingly well-off man lacking any link to the life he lived, offering no answer to the obvious question, who is the Jacobs Gulch John Doe? Jacobs Gulch is the home to Kellogg High School, but the land surrounding sees often public use for its mountain trails. On this June Wednesday, following the grim discovery, the Shoshone County Sheriff's Office would begin their investigation, taking inventory of the scene and the John Doe. The man himself was believed to be white with freckles and in his 50s to 60s. He was approximately 5 foot 10 and 185 pounds. His hair was gray but showed some red highlights and his eyes were brown. He wore both upper and lower dentures, and the man also wore glasses with a particularly unique prescription. I'll display that prescription here for you. He also appeared to have an appendectomy scar. As for worldly possessions, the man was wearing a gold Seiko watch on his left wrist. He wore a gray, blue, and black long sleeve button-up shirt over a pair of black Wrangler jeans. He wore a black leather weave belt donning an etched silver buckle with a turquoise stone in the center. He wore black Athletic Works brand Velcro shoes and plain white socks and underwear. Affixed to his belt was a nylon bottle carrier with a partial bottle of Diet Pepsi. As well, he wore a black nylon shoulder holster for his pistol with an empty magazine pouch. Nearby the body, a medium-sized black members-only jacket with a roll of red and white Star Bright mints were found, alongside a black Rome brand duffel bag. Inside the bag was a medium-sized brown leather jacket with a Navajo design, some napkins, tissues, sanitizer wipes from the service master, more mints, a black fold-up pocket knife, partial pack of Doral cigarettes, a pair of silver scissors, a black and yellow lighter, a fully loaded 9mm mag in a Ziploc bag, and $7 cash with miscellaneous change. The weapon found beneath the body was a Smith & Wesson Model 915. The serial number on the gun allowed it to be traced back to having been sold at a gun show in Houston, Texas in 1996. However, the seller had since destroyed their records. The man is not believed to be from the area at the time of his death. The Silver Valley is surrounded by mountains with the main means of ingress being two mountain passes on I-90. As there was no train service, no nearby abandoned vehicles, and no record of a flight into the small airport nearby, some investigators believe that he likely took the Greyhound bus into town. The stop at the time would have been at the Gondolier, a gas station convenience store at the mouth of Jacobs Gulch. Unfortunately, investigations with Greyhound were ultimately unable to return an identity for the man. While the location he was found in may have been personally significant to him, it is also possible he chose this area as it was a pretty straight shot up the gulch to the secluded trail. Investigators believe they can exclude the following missing persons from consideration. Richard Long, missing from Douglas County, Oregon, as of December 18, 2001. Ronald Druce, missing from Salt Lake County, Utah, May 20, 2000. James Negra, missing from Los Angeles County, California, June 10, 2001. And Michael Allen, missing from Pasco County, Florida, October 31, 1997. Due to his body being found relatively quickly after his death, an accurate detailed sketch was able to be procured. Postmortem photos are also available online for comparison but will not be shown here. The man was well kept, well fed, and did not seem like a transient type. The glasses he was found in were not cheap and were found only to be sold in Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. Seemingly, care was taken to obfuscate his identity and he may have ended his journey far from home. The man would be in his 70s to 80s now, and any surviving family is aging having spent the last 20 years without basic closure. If you recognize the man in this sketch, please reach out to jacobsgulchjohndoe at gmail.com to help unite this unidentified man with his rightful identity and finally find an answer to the tantalizing question. Who is the Jacobs Gulch John Doe?